Last week, I went to Google's London office at King's Cross for a Chromebook event covering how rolling out from today, Chrome OS version 125 is about to bring a number of much anticipated updates to all Chromebooks. And for Chromebook Plus models, there's an even bigger change, as Google Gemini and AI updates are here. Not just that, but there's new Chromebook Plus and regular Chromebook hardware to talk about too. In this video, I'll take you through all you need to know from the Chromebook event. And if you're watching the video as it goes live on the 28th of May, these new updates will be rolling out from today, so check your Chromebook. Stick around to the end of the video too, as I was also given a look ahead to some updates coming to Chrome OS beyond today. First off, I need to say a big thanks to all of the Chrome OS and Chromebook team from Google who were involved in putting on the event, and also the wider team who have been working to deliver all of this functionality I'm about to show you. Thanks very much for all of these really cool branded goodies too. As well as these, I thought you guys would like to see the really nicely boxed lone Chromebook Plus model I was given. This has allowed me access to all of the new functionality, including Google Gemini and the new AI features, so I could test it out and put this video together for you in time for the launch as you watch this from the 28th of May. I'm using an Asus Chromebook Plus CX34 here. Although hard to tell from the outside, this isn't actually the new model, but I'll tell you about that and the other new hardware later in this video. So logging into the Asus and if you're on your updated Chromebook Plus the first thing that will jump out is the Google Gemini app pinned to the shelf packaged up as a progressive web app. So obviously no surprises by now that Chromebook Plus with Gemini really was the headliner from the event. You may have already been using Gemini so I'm not going to go into loads of prompt writing examples here or use cases but of course you can now easily start to use it more or try it out for the first time. One big thing to be aware of is that if you purchase a new Chromebook Plus from today you should see a Chromebook perk via a button like the one shown in this mock-up in the top right. It's an offer to give you a year of Gemini Advanced for free. Gemini Advanced is normally just under £19 a month in the UK and just under $20 a month in the US, so if you're someone who will get value out of the advanced features and are considering paying for it anyway, the deal of a new Chromebook Plus model with 12 months free of Gemini Advanced might look pretty appealing on paper, with prices for new Chromebook Plus models starting from £379 in the UK, you could see that as being just over an extra £150 for the Chromebook Plus hardware itself and all the other benefits it brings. It's certainly going to make a new Chromebook Plus model even more appealing, but we'll get more into the hardware in just a bit and I'll also show you some of the extra benefits of Gemini Advance I really like too. For non-Chromebook Plus owners, it is of course worth remembering you can access Gemini through your web browser right now. You just won't have the app-style packaging or of course the offer for the 12 months of Gemini Advanced. As an extra reminder to all, that offer for new Chromebook Plus purchases is set to run through to the end of the year. It's also worth noting that if you're using Gemini through your browser like that, or if you already have a Chromebook Plus so you don't qualify for the 12 months free offer, you can check for any other offers on Gemini Advanced. The current offer in the UK and I believe the US shows us two months free. I was really pleased to see that the new AI features aren't constrained to the Gemini app, so let me show you the new Help Me Write functionality. So this is Google's example of writing a blog, but this feature is going to show up in different areas. So other examples mentioned were social media sites, YouTube descriptions or community posts, or even messaging in WhatsApp. So you can see I'm trying it out here in X to see if it can help me write a tweet. Can I still call them tweets? Anyway, you can see it's just a case of right clicking and selecting the option to try out help me write. You can give it a prompt of what you want to write and then select from one of the options it generates and or use it to refine something you've already written or it's already written for you. So let's go ahead and see if I can give it this prompt to help me write an engaging tweet as to why anyone considering buying a new laptop might want to consider a Chromebook Plus model. Hopefully it's going to give me a few options and I can pick one of them and then obviously further refine it or decide to go with it. I think all of these AI features, they're only going to get better. I wouldn't take anything it gives me as verbatim or just repost exactly as it appears, but it might just, as the name suggests, help you write. So here's a few options it's giving me, as you can see, and you can pick the one you like the best. And obviously you can then refine it yourself or use some of the functionality I'll show you in just a second for it to refine it for you. So let's go with this option, click insert, and obviously it's just going to appear as text in my tweet. So now rather than posting this, let's see how this can further refine it for me. 
So you can select any text you want to refine or change like I've done here and then right click again. And then you see you get options like rephrase, emojify, shorten, elaborate or formalize. Being me, I'm going to pick emojify. So let's see what it does. OK, so it's just generated a few more options again. And you can see it's just put emojis in kind of obvious places. And of course, you can now pick one of these and again, refine it further if you like or accept it as it's presented and just hit replace. There we go. Brilliant. I said I'd show you an extra benefit you get with Gemini Advanced if you decide to try that out as well. And that feature is having this help me write functionality in Google Docs. So you can have that through your browser, whether you're on your Chromebook or not. It also works in Gmail, so you can draft emails with it. To assure you, my scripts aren't written by AI, and if you see the detail it's presenting here, you can probably see why. It's getting pretty muddled up with some facts and information that clearly don't apply to Chromebook Plus models, but it's a nice first step, and as I mentioned, all of this AI functionality is only going to get better over time. So there's three more AI updates for Chromebook Plus I'm going to show you. These next two are pretty similar in the way they work. First, we've got generative AI wallpaper. So right click on your desktop, select set wallpaper and style. And first of all, you're going to see your existing wallpaper. So you can click into that. That's what we're going to be changing. So click on there. And then in the next screen, you're going to see this new option create with AI. So we're going to click onto that and then look at generating our own wallpaper with AI. So you'll get the usual introduction, things to bear in mind that you can check over. And once you've read through that, you can click onto the got it button over on the right hand side. And then we've got these initial prompts and options to look at. I'm going to pick the surreal option in the top right to start with. And we can further customize these by picking any of the underlined words and clicking on them to tweak them. So instead of a meadow, I'm going to pick a beach, so a surreal beach. And instead of flowers, I'm going to pick snow, so a surreal beach with snow. Then we hit create and the AI is going to do its thing and generate some options for us. So we're going to see a number of options come back. And as usual, you can either recreate them or you can pick the one you like the most. Let's just pick this one in the bottom left hand corner just by clicking on it. And then you're going to see it's going to create a high res version of that image and it's going to apply it to your desktop. So as soon as that's done, if we then minimize this window, we should see our new desktop background as generated by the AI. Pretty cool. In a similar way, we've also got generative AI video call backgrounds, but you can use them for photos too, of course. So you're going to want to open your camera app and then come down to the bottom right hand corner area of the screen to see your camera controls. Click on the arrowhead and then you're going to want to select the image option. So that's going to take us through a similar walkthrough as to the one we've just seen for the desktop backgrounds. So as usual, you can read the things to bear in mind and then click on to the got it button. So we're then going to walk through in a similar way and pick the prompt we want. So I'm going to select the cafe prompt and I'm going to change it from a cozy cottage cafe. So instead of cozy, let's have distressed. And instead of cottage, let's have um, outdoor. So a distressed outdoor cafe. Let's see what the AI makes of that. So we click create. It's going to generate the options for us to select from. Uh, these don't look too distressed to me. If that's what the AI thinks is distressed, then that's maybe pretty positive. Um, I'm going to select this one in the bottom left. So we just click on it again and then straight away it's applied to the background of our camera app. And that can be used, as I say, for photos or for video calls or just for recording a video. Whatever you like, that's going to be your background in the camera app now. The final update under the AI banner is the magic editor in the Google Photos app. Google's example of it here looks pretty slick and I've also played with it a bit on my Pixel and been fairly impressed. The unique selling point for Chromebook Plus here is this is going to be the only desktop style device with the ability to use the magic editor. And you're also going to get unlimited edits. So again, anyone heavily into using the Magic Editor might be tempted to seriously consider a new Chromebook Plus. Having a quick go on the Asus Chromebook Plus here, you can simply select your photo and click Edit, and then look for the Magic Editor button in the top left-hand corner. As this Chromebook looks like it's likely to jump off the table, I'll try and move it back a bit, but it's a bit less smooth for me without a touchscreen, and maybe this photo isn't the best example, but it's a great extra option to have.
So having now shown you all the new AI based features rolling out from today to Chromebook Plus, my view is the Chrome OS team and Google have offered a really decent balance here of productivity and fun. I like the fact that this really gives Chromebook Plus an additional distinct advantage. Having the free year of Gemini Advance for new Chromebook Plus purchases is excellent and having the regular Gemini for everyone means it's not an all or nothing offering. I'm pleased to see Gemini Advanced is the only part that's subscription based. It seems to be the right balance to me. Having the AI more integrated into the device itself with features like Help Me Write make it seem a lot smoother too. It's not in your face or gimmicky, but of course tell me what you think in the comments. We're not done yet though with the Chrome OS 125 updates. Next I'll give you an overview of the updates rolling out today to all Chromebooks, not just the Plus models. I think the most anticipated update in Chrome OS 125 for all Chromebooks is this, the game dashboard. It's really nicely integrated into pretty much all ways you could think to play games on your Chromebook, including GeForce Now and Android games like I'm playing here, being Minecraft. Just press the everything button, aka the search key, plus G together, or you can hover at the top of the screen to see it, and the game dashboard will open. One of the main features is the ability to screen record your game, optionally with the webcam and device or microphone audio, much like the screen recording functionality we've had for a while in Chrome OS. This is now actually the screen recording file I made of the gameplay here in Minecraft. The second big benefit is the ability to now play a game that only has touch controls on your Chromebook, even if you don't have a touch screen. The game dashboard lets you select an area of the screen and map a keyboard key to it to overcome the issue of not having touch input. Pretty clever. Other updates you'll see on your Chromebook from today if you update include Google Tasks integration coming directly into Chrome OS. Just click down in the bottom right of the screen on the date and you'll see your tasks above the calendar, available for you to strike off or add more to your ever-growing to-do list if you're anything like me. Next, I may have missed this when setting up my loan Chromebook, but you should see an option during setup to avoid manually entering passwords for Wi-Fi and your Google account by instead scanning a QR code and following the steps given. There's also an update to the screen recording functionality. If you select an area of the screen to record, you'll now see the option to record as a GIF. So a nice way to create a small looping animation to, I don't know, spam your friends on social media with. So those are the main highlights in Chrome OS 125 coming to all Chromebooks. Now we can take a look at the new Chromebook hardware that's rolling out. So there's a lot of new hardware, which is great. Seven new Chromebook Plus models and three regular Chromebooks to tell you about here. I'll cover availability in the UK and the US but obviously check for your region or drop a question in the comments. For Chromebook Plus the new Acer Chromebook Plus 514 looks to already be available in the US and should be available in the UK shortly. From the last version of this model they're switching to Intel this time so they're going to have the core i3 N305 rather than an AMD processor and to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio compared to the previous 16 by 10. I saw this one at the event briefly and hopefully we'll get hold of one to show you more on the channel soon. Acer are also releasing a new Chromebook Plus Spin 714 version that will be available for both the US and the UK. It's got the Intel Core Ultra 5 processor and a Quad HD 1440p webcam. That all sounds really interesting and I think the one I saw at the event may have actually been the very similar looking previous model. HP will be releasing a convertible HP Chromebook Plus X360 14B model, also with the Core i3 N305 processor from Intel, and that's coming to both regions. There's also a non-convertible 14-inch Chromebook Plus due from HP, but I can find less detail on that one at the moment to show you, but it should also have the Core i3 N305. The US is already seeing or due to see three other Chromebook Plus models, including the updated Asus Chromebook Plus CX30, which will look very similar to my lone device but comes with a new 13th gen Core i5 processor, the updated Acer Chromebook Plus 516 GE with an Intel Core 5 Series 1 processor, and their high-end Asus Chromebook Plus ExpertBook CX54, which will have an Intel Core Ultra 5 processor, which I can't see availability online as yet while I'm putting this video together. There's also some regular Chromebooks releasing, with HP having two available in the UK and the US. Firstly, a convertible X360 model with the Intel N100 processor, 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, and then a similar spec non-convertible 14-inch model, which again I can't see more detail on just yet. 
In the US, there's also the Asus CM30, a 10.5 inch detachable tablet form factor Chromebook with the MediaTek MT8186, aka the Companio 520 processor. So in summary, a lot of hardware and first impressions look promising as a lot of these are iterating devices we've already seen. I'll hopefully get to show you some more of these on the channel in the near future, so please do consider subscribing and clicking the bell to get notified when I upload. At the event, the Chrome OS team shared some of the upcoming features that are in development, like this, the Where Was I Welcome Back overview, so you can pick up where you left off after you've logged out or shut down your Chromebook, returning to a neat overview of your various Windows and apps. I was given a great live demo and I can see how this could be really useful. I was also shown focus mode, you can turn it on now by using the focus mode on Chrome OS flag. I like the idea of this and I'll be interested to see how it develops. Anything to minimise distractions and focus on a task sounds good to me. For accessibility, there's face and gesture tracking in development, and I was shown another impressive demo controlling a game of tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses just with eyes and mouth. You can turn on the face gaze flag if you want to start to get an idea of how this accessibility control will work and see some of the detail in the controls behind it and the subtleties of the different gestures that it will be able to recognise. For Chromebook Plus, there's going to be a Help Me Read with Gemini feature. Think of it as a way to summarise websites or PDFs and then ask questions. Thanks again to all of the Chrome OS team for these demos and the whole event. It really feels like an exciting time for Chrome OS and Chromebooks. And thanks to you if you've made it this far through the video. Drop me a comment to let me know. And hopefully it's been worth a like. Let's see if Gemini's earlier advice to me has helped. Cheers.